Carrie, today's recipe is super cheap, super easy to make, and mouthwateringly delicious. Wow, that sounds like my kind of recipe. It totally is. You are going to love it. Oh, I cannot wait. Okay, so is this something from our childhood? It totally is, but you've eaten it as an adult and have just loved it too. Really? Yeah. I cannot imagine. We should get to cooking. We really should. Welcome to Mom's Wooden Spoon. Get your apron on and your fanny flicker ready as we cook up some nostalgia. Ooh, yummy. Welcome, everybody, to the first episode of Season 2 of Mom's Wooden Spoon. Woohoo! Yeah. We made it to Season 2. I cannot believe it. Lame high five to you. Woohoo! Nice. We did it. I'm so excited, you guys. We really missed you cooking, laughing, reminiscing with you all. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to be back. I'm Me excited too. to be doing this. It's been a sad, miserable summer, really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not for Kiri. No, we, we've had a good summer because we have spent part of that time finding some of the best recipes to cook this season. Well, I don't know that I would say they're all the Yes, that's true. They are a range of opportunities to either delight or disgust you. Yes, I think that's an accurate representation. <laughs> and we also have some pretty exciting things in the works for you guys in the next couple of months. Exciting things? What yeah. is that? Well, maybe some contests and some opportunities. Ooh, yeah. opportunities. Yeah, we want to be interacting with you guys more. All right. Yep, so check out our social media and keep an eye out for some of these fun things that will be coming. So our Instagram and our the face page. The face page. You got it. Perfect. Well, today's recipe yes. comes from Mary's final memo again. Yeah, so we're kind of going back to the beginning. We are. Which is the end. I know, right? That doesn't make any sense, That's but I weird. like it. Yep. Yeah, so if you guys remember, this is the final Mary's memo that we happened upon in Chief Supermarket last summer, right before we were about to start recording Mom's Wooden Spoon, episode one. It was like the push. We're like, oh my gosh. The stars have aligned. Yeah. The universe wants us to do mom's wooden spoon. So we are so excited about this recipe because it is an Ohio staple. Oh my gosh. The memories of this food are epic. They are. Yeah. Absolutely. And we ate this all through the 70s and 80s. And 90s. Whatever. I, I am sure if you went to Northwest Ohio and attended a high school football game, you too could have this food. Church potluck. Oh, yeah. Strawberry festival. I am pretty sure I had it at high school graduation parties. Oh, I'm sure. What an easy, delicious recipe. It is the shredded Ohio chicken sandwich. Oh, I'm so excited. I am too. Now, this particular recipe by Mary is called Grace Carr's Easy Hot chicken sandwich filling, which is a mouthful. It is. But who wants the difficult to make hot chicken sandwich filling? Ain't nobody want that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, she's not kidding when she says this is easy. Okay. It is three ingredients. Sweet. All this includes is cooked chicken, mm -hmm. chicken broth, mm -hmm. and saltine crackers. Done. Crushed up. That's, That's easy, perfect. It is. right? But when I looked up the recipe online, there are a million of them. There are indeed. There are a lot of them that have cream soups. Yes, a lot makes, of cream soup. That's kind of cringy to me. I don't know. It might be good. Some of them even had a flour butter, like a roux mixture to thicken mm. it. This really only has the saltine crackers to thicken it. That's what I remember, though, yeah. is that it was moist because of like the liquid that would yeah, it was pull in the bottom. Yeah, it was pretty juicy. It would make that hamburger bun get really soggy on the bottom but good yes yes now there is a wonderful cook on tiktok he also is on insta and facebook his name is floyd fry f-r-y-e okay and if you guys have not checked him out he is awesome now he cooks recipes from all around the country but he lives in ohio okay and he did his own take at an ohio shredded chicken sandwich and his has all kinds of really cool stuff like condensed milk. Oh, 
which would make sense because he doesn't use the cream of mushroom or cream of celery right. soup. And he cooks his own roaster chicken in the Instapot. Oh, now that's just craziness. That's a couple steps. That takes that's, it right out of Carrie's wheelhouse. It's way out of Carrie's wheelhouse. Yeah. This will be the easiest one we ever find. I think so. Yep. Yeah. And hopefully delicious and so reminiscent. I cannot wait to try it. Now, Mary said on the memo that this is a super easy recipe. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit more detailed before the invention of the rotisserie chicken. Oh, well, sure, because you'd have to do like Floyd yeah. and cook your own chicken, whether you boiled it right. or crock-potted it. Yeah, and, and my dilemma with deciding how to make the chicken for this was, do you use all white meat or do you use white and dark meat because white meat is drier? I think you have to do all of it. I think so too. So yeah. that is why my wonderful husband went to BJ's Club and got us one of their Gigantor rotisserie chickens. They're so good. They really are good. So we are going to be cutting this sucker apart as we chit chat with you guys. We need three cups of cubed cooked chicken. And so I'm going to get started cutting this sucker in half. I'm going to give Carrie half the chicken and I'll take half the chicken. And then I think we're going to need to peel off the skin. Yeah. And Kristen will get done with her half before I get done with my half um, and then mock me mercilessly. Not that we've done this before. <laughs> so when I think of these chicken sandwiches, I think of large aluminum tins that people would have put all of theirs in, whether they right. made it with canned chicken, fresh chicken, whatever chicken. I was fascinated to find out it's obviously called Ohio Chicken Sandwich. But yeah. not just Ohio, it's really very regional in Ohio to basically where we grew up, Northwest yep. Ohio. Yep. So you go to Cincinnati and you're like, hey, I need some Ohio chicken sandwich. They'll be like, uh, fried chicken? They're, they're going to have no idea what you're talking about. Which is so cool because when I was doing research about this, there is a couple who live in California who actually missed these wonderful shredded chicken sandwiches and they made a website. I saw it. It is so cool. Yes, it has can, a map. Yes, and you can go and find different places in Ohio. Yeah, they tell where you can find them. Uh -huh. And so it's mostly central and Northwest Ohio. Yep. If you guys go to TikTok or Instagram to find Floyd Fry, he talks a lot about what the chicken sandwiches would be like locally in, in different places in Ohio. Ah, okay. Yeah. He also talks about the various chips that you might eat with them. <laughs> uh, and so we'll talk about that later because we got some chippies from Ohio. Oh, we did. I'm so excited. This is like going to be a full childhood fun event meal. Oh, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, if you go to that website, let me see, what was, what was the name of that couple? Uh, it was like chickensandwich.com or something. It, it, was, it is. It's chickensandwich.info. That's it. Yep. Which doesn't sound like a real website, but it is. Yep. It's by Tom and Donna Thorpe. I'm not sure they've updated it very recently. It didn't look like it, but they also have people who sent in their recipes for their chicken sandwiches so you can see That's right. some other people's, you know, sandwiches. I think there were 17 other recipes for this chicken. Now the one by their aunt Dorothy, her recipe is just like this. Okay. Basic with the broth and flour instead of the the saltines to thicken it. I saw but some of them use Stuffing mix. Stovetop stuffing yes, mix. Yes, and I love oh, stovetop stuffing I do too. I bet that tastes so good. Mm. I bet I'm, I have no doubt because it would add some spices and some flavor. Yeah. So one of my other favorite parts about this sandwich is it was always served on a bun. Oh, yes. Okay, so I just recently, total rando, saw this article about, it was like, I don't know, 20 things to uh, make you know if you grew up poor. Oh my gosh. And one of the first items and what made me think of it is that when you ate foods at home, you never ate them on a bun. You ate them on white bread. Oh, that was so, us. <laughs> yeah. So hamburger, you would have this grease stained little floppy piece of white bread in the middle <laughs> with all the hard edges that had no anything tasty at all, <laughs> but you couldn't tear them off and leave them on your plate because you were right. wasting food and you'd get in trouble. Oh, heck yeah. We had sloppy joes on slices on of white bread. Slices of white bread. Hot dogs. 
you oh, yes, put them corner yes. to corner and fold the bread up to make your own exciting bun exactly. with the triangle tops, again, with no filling in them whatsoever. <laughs> there was no. nothing on the edges. So whatever ketchup that you'd put would like flop off. Oh, heck yeah. Now, you know, I don't know that we were poor, but our parents had to be frugal. Oh, for sure. Well, it made me think of my grandma. We went to a buffet. On the buffet, they had a huge wheel of cheese. <laughs> and so my grandma went and cut a wedge off of the wheel of cheese, right. put it on her plate, brought it back to the table, wrapped that wedge in a <laughs> napkin, and stuck that sucker in her purse. <laughs> <laughs> you grow up during the depression, you have the opportunity to get some free cheese, you go for it. Heck yeah, you do. You take that. I mean, that's just smart thinking. That's right. <laughs> so that was so that was another one that I thought of. And then I remember doing this, also cheese. Yeah. So you would go and get like the block of cheddar cheese yeah. from the refrigerator mm-hmm. and oh man, there's mold growing on the edge of it. Oh, you would just um, cut that sucker off and move on. Right? Yes, you would. <laughs> Apparently, rich people didn't do that. What? Yeah, <laughs> true story. So I thought that was an interesting How one. How wasteful, you richies. I know. <laughs> and then the last one was generics. Just always buying oh, generic, yeah. which I do to this day. Oh, yeah. Although there are some generics I am unwilling to purchase. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I have some very strong feelings about what is acceptable as a generic and what is not. And so one of my no-goes in generic. Okay, tell me. Raisin bran. Have you ever had generic raisin bran? I don't think I have. Okay, so I've been like this for a long time. My mom thought I was full of crap. And so she, I remember this when I was in high school, bought generic raisin bran thinking she was so sly. And she got a clear plastic container, poured the whole thing of raisin bran into the cereal container before I ever saw it. Yeah. And put it in the closet and said, hey, Carrie, I bought some raisin bran. Yeah. I like raisin bran. I go to get the raisin bran. I open up the container. I look at her and I'm like, "Uh, this is generic. Oh my gosh. And she's like, no, it's not. (laughs) Sneaky lady. Yeah. How did you know? Yeah. So Raisin Bran Flakes, when they're name brand, are thin and crisp. Oh, and delightful. Delightful. Raisin bran flakes, when you buy generic, are thick and stodgy. Oh, and stodgy. Stodgy. I'm Ooh. not sure that I know exactly what stodgy means. I'm not sure that that's a way to describe a food, but we're going we're for gonna it. We're going to do yep. it. And disgusting. And oh, you can tell the difference visually. That's wild. Hey, Kira, you keep putting chicken in my measuring cup, but I already have cut up the uh, three cups of chicken and it's in the casserole already. Shut your face. (laughs) What the heck have you been doing? Talking. (laughs) Here's a towel. Wipe your hands. Done. This is not funny. It's not funny. It's not funny. I worked hard (laughs) on peeling the skin off that chicken and Taking it off the bone, FYI. Yeah. I get mocked at my house. Yeah. I do not eat things on the bone with my hands. Oh. It grosses me out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I order ribs, which I like, they're delicious. You serve me ribs, I get out my knife and my fork, Oh, and I cut the meat off the bone. I cut it into bite-sized pieces, and I eat said meat. Right. You serve me half a chicken on the bone, I get out my knife and fork. Cut it off the bone. Yes. Yeah. So you handed me all of this and expected me to put my hands on it. That's disgusting. Ew, I'm sorry. Disgusting. Oh, my gosh. But did I Did I complain? She did not. No. Did I just jump in there with my hands? She did. Did you even touch any bone? Did I push down the gag reflex? <laughs> I don't suffer through the internal pain and suffering. I did silently for you. Carrie, you didn't even touch a bone. You didn't even get down to the bone. I gave you a chicken there's off the a bone. Whole, there's a whole piece. And I, I didn't get that part because it was gross. Oh my Lord. I pulled the I pulled the wing off. It made this awful sound. Did you guys hear that sound? I, I heard it. I think she's making a big to-do over nothing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, a way less fun recipe than it was. Here is not having any fun at all, (laughs) but I am. (laughs) So, okay, so we're going to move my cutting board. Just just put it over there, Care Bear. And half of a chicken. (laughs) We'll have that for dinner. So, thinking about this chicken sandwich, I read on that website that Eric's ice cream in defiance. (gasps) 
actually has this. Now, I don't know how old it is if they still serve this. How could they not? I know, but those of you who listen to us and live in the Defiance area, if you would find out if Eric's ice cream serves these shredded chicken sandwiches, I would love to know because I want to go get one when we're back in Defiance. Oh my gosh, my daughter will lose it because her most favorite activity when we go home oh yeah, is to go to Eric's. Well, speaking of ice cream, Chicken sandwiches remind me of our church's strawberry festival Yes, because ice cream is great in the summer and our strawberry festivals were always in like June, early summer. Okay. So if you've never heard of our church's strawberry festival or other churches, churches have strawberry festivals. You would have towns have strawberry festivals. You would have no idea why Kristen's calling it a strawberry festival and referring to ice cream. The guys would make homemade ice Mm. cream, which was not my favorite. What? I know. It, I always thought it was kind of grainy. It is. <laughs> That's part of what makes it so amazing. Not my fave, but what was my fave, I, Carrie? I, I can't get past that you don't like the ice cream. No, no, no. So I would not get the ice cream. I would get the homemade fresh strawberry pie, which has fresh strawberry slices and then the gel that kind of holds them in this beautifully baked crust. That's fine. No, no. The pie is great. And you know what it reminds me of? The deliciousness of homemade ice cream. No. The pies at the famous Bud's Restaurant in Defiance, Ohio. I always just assumed that's where the pies came from, but probably not. I think the ladies at church made them. Right. But you cannot beat a Bud's pie. No. And we were just home this summer. Went to Bud's. And do you know what they had? Pie. And cheesesteak. Whoa. Oh, I got the cheese, stick, <laughs> which is a whole nother topic for another day because our waitress, oh, it's a topic for today, I guess, because <laughs> uh, our waitress was from New Jersey and she says, you know, this is not a real cheese steak. And I was like, well, I've gotten it here since I was a kid. She goes, oh, that you understand it's not like cheesecake, a cheese steak. <laughs> cheese steak is nothing <laughs> like cheese cake. Like cheese cake. Ew. They're ones made of meat. <laughs> the cheese steak at Bud's is a hamburger steak with onions and cheese in it. It's not like a cheese steak sandwich that you would get in Philly or. Right. Right. So she oh, was like, so good. Oh, but it is so good. Yeah. You so can good. get it on a bun. Yeah. Or a platter. I like it on the platter. I like it on the platter yeah. too. No but, bread needed. Just oh, no, no, no. Cheese steak delicious. No. Oh. But we got whispers when we got there that they were making something special. And since we're from Georgia, they were excited to sell us a couple slices. Pecan pie. Fresh peach pie. Oh, so much better. Nothing better. Heavenly. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are ever in the Defiance, Ohio area, you've got to go to Bud's. It's a diner. It's been there forever. It is so super tiny. It was on CNN last year. It was. Yeah. Yeah. It's famous. It is so famous. It's nationally known. That's right. We Love it. So you'll have to check it out. At least go for a piece of pie. Oh my gosh. It totally worth it. Yep. It is um oh they have like lemon meringue pie. The meringue is so tall. Oh, it is so tall. So tart and delicious. Oh my gosh. I hate coconut, but they have the best coconut cream pie. Oh, they do. Oh, oh they so do. Good. And if you're lucky and you go on a day that they have the butterscotch pie, <gasps> your yes. life is good. Oh my gosh. It, it is. <laughs> Life altering. I mean, not that we like desserts or no. anything, but if we did, if we did, it'd be you fine. know, we may have picked a few more desserts this year than we had last season. <laughs> did we? I think we did. Well, it's because we're smart. It's because we love sugar the, and we get to taste test. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have two things we need to do with this recipe. Okay. And that is we have to crush the saltine crackers. So I got us a gallon size Ziploc baggie and a rolling pin. Okay. And then we need to add two cups of this chicken broth in with this cut of chicken. I want to crush. You want to say it again. I want to crush. I want to crush. I do. Okay. Here you go. Fago crush. Oh, I like her that does crush. I don't know. I want to pop. I want to shasta. Do you remember that? I do, but that's not, is that Fago? It's not, but come on, that's fun to say. Well, sing it with me now. I want to pop. I want to shasta. I made my son sing that the last time we were in Ohio because he had a shasta soda. He was annoyed, but that's okay. So so was I. So. As, gra- as grandma would say, do often what you do best. You're mean, but I guess I deserve it. <laughs> okay, I'm dumping the crackers in the bag. This may be noisy. 
Okay, and I don't think I need a rolling pin. She's just going to smush, smush, smush. Mm -hmm. Smush, smush, smush. Smush those crackers. You are very sing-songy today. I am. Well, speaking of sing-songy, I think in our promo trailer, we talked a little bit about those hand clap songs. We did. I loved those. Yeah, spoiler alert. It's too late. Well, the, if you hadn't listened to the promo yet, now Kristen just told you kind of what's in it. But if you didn't listen to the promo, stop already. now. Go, go back. listen to the promo. Yeah, because it's then, cute. And then come back right here now. We were funny. It was cute. We're hilarious. <laughs> okay, so what were some of the hand clap songs that you remembered the most? Okay, so the first one that comes to mind was to the song, I'm sure it's the advertisement song, of these little stuffed animals <gasps> called Manchichis. I always wanted a Manchichi. I was too really? old to have a Manchichi. They, they, they would stick their thumb in their mouth. In their mouth. They had soft bodies, plastic hands, yeah. and a plastic face. I thought they were cute. I think they were kind of creepy. No, I don't know this one. I think no, I was I'll, too old to know this. I'll okay. do it. You sing it and I'll clap. So you do like Manchichi, Manchichi. Oh, so soft and cuddly. And you have to hold yourself when okay, you're doing I'm oh, doing so it. soft okay. and cuddly. Manchichi, manchichi. I am cool like Fonzie. And then mm. you have to make like thumbs, thumbs up. A. Like Fonzie. Oh, yeah. And there's a whole bunch. Like Manchichi knows karate and you karate chop. And then at the very end, you do Manchichi, Manchichi. And then you smack the crap out of your friend, as all children like to do. Oh. And then you cover your mouth and go, oops, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and so it was fun when you got to the end because it was a whole lot of dodging and weaving and oh, smacking. And I think that's why I never participated in that one. I did not like getting hurt. Uh, yes. I, I was a wussy. She she totally was a wuss. I she was. would bruise. Like you'd poke her too hard and she'd have like a bruise on her whole Oh, I totally would. Arm. Red Rover was my worst nightmare. Why well, did not like Red Rover? No. Did people actually like Red I think Rover? kids liked Red Rover. Oh. I hated it. When somebody came running at me, I was like, I'm dropping hands. I'm well, dropping hands. Well, and that's why they always ran at you. Of course. Yeah, well, they always ran at me too because I let go. It hurt. It did. And then I didn't want to run at people because then they would hold firm and and I then you get it in the gut, you get clotheslined, but across your tongue. On yeah, purpose. Not fun. This is fun. No, just like getting slapped in the manchi cheek. No, that was fun. That was fun. Oh, yeah, we should do the whole thing and I'll smack you. I don't. Let's move on. Okay, so before we pour this in, do we have another hand clap song? Oh, I, yeah, there's a million. Okay, um, uh, so this one, I think you started with holding pinkies. Ooh. And you'd swing your hands out and uh -huh. in and go, see, see my playmate, come out and play with me and bring your dollies three, climb up your apple tree, get to the grass down my rainbow, into my cellar door, and we'll be happy friends forever more, more, lock the door. <laughs> Okay, so first off, I just about smacked Christian in the forehead six times <laughs> during that little ditty. Second of all, clearly, we remember the words differently. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we do. I always thought it was, CC my playmate, come out and play with me. But there was a neighborhood dog named CC <gasps> who was a terror of all terrors. Oh, he was horrible. He or was. she, I don't know what it I was. Don't know. I just know it was evil. Oh my gosh, he was like this little tiny white dog and he would chase you and bite your ankles as you rode your bikes. He would. So we'd come down the hill of our driveway. We were at the end of a circle. You'd go around the circle past Cece's house. Cece would come tearing down his driveway, oh, yeah. nipping at your ankles. So you had two choices to go down the driveway as fast as possible and then lift your legs up super high yeah. so stupid little Cece couldn't reach them and bite them yeah. until you got out of Cece's That's what territory. I yeah. Or once I was having a bad day. I oh, have guilt. Scary. Oh my God, I have guilt from this. Oh no. And CC, are you got, gonna tell this? Yeah, I am. Okay, oh, I'm riding my bike. I did not get the start. I did not see CC, so I didn't realize CC was out. Yeah. So I did not do the speed down the driveway. Yeah. So I'm meandering down. CC comes out, got my ankle good. Ooh. I was not in a good mood. I kick CC. Oh, Karen. Not hard. I did not get the. You know, uh -huh. like none of that. But I. He bit me. Oh, he didn't mess with you after that, did he? I he probably did. Uh, I don't think yeah. he was all that bright. But um, <laughs> oh, Cece oh, was Cece. Mean. 
Oh, do you remember another thing that we used to We're do? We're going to have animal people call, aren't we? Because I just said. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut this story, I think. That's it not very nice. It wasn't a hard kick, people. It wasn't hard. It was self-defense. Yeah, that's what we're calling it. I'm pouring the broth in if you guys hear the slushy slushy. Makes me have to go to the bathroom. Two cups. Two cups of okay, liquid. Okay, and then we're going to stop talking for just a moment, and I'm going to crush. All right, crush something. the heck out of This is so much fun. All right, broth is in. Carrie keeps crushing crackers. I forgot to get us a spoon to stir it around, so let me do that. Oh my gosh, sometimes people would put potato chips, crunched up potato chips in this Ooh, as well. What kind of potato chips? Well, we know what kind we would use, but we're not talking about we're that We're not? Yet. What do we need to talk about it? When we have the sandwiches, I have a surprise for you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited. Okay, yeah. So what we're going to do is I've stirred this up pretty well, and we are going to pop this in the oven at 350 for one hour. Did you get bunny bread buns? I am so disappointed I did not get bunny bread. I don't think they make bunny bread anymore. They, I think they do. They do? I don't know. but uh, I had a friend that you know, left Defiance. Yeah. Def Defiance had a Browns Bakery. Oh, and yeah. And they made bunny bread products. And that side of town always smelled so delightful. Our grandma lived over there, so we would visit, and the whole side of town would smell like baking bread. Oh, it was amazing. It was so good. And so my friend left and went to college elsewhere, and every time her parents visited, she would ask them to bring her, like, Two loaves of bunny bread. Oh, it's so <laughs> soft. It's even better than Wonder Bread, but it's along that same line. It like is. soft, fluffy yes. white bread. The buns were so good. They'd soak up all the juice from this shredded chicken. Yes. We never had bunny bread. No, it was too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we were poor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I'm going to get this in the oven. And while I'm popping this in the oven, Carrie, yes. all of this keeps reminding me of summer. And I was sure. thinking about some other stuff we would do out in the road Okay, when Cece was not harassing us, <laughs> right? Yeah. We, I mean, we definitely grew up in the day where you left the house in the morning and you came back in the evening. That's right. Unless you were allergic to everything that was outside of the house. Which and then, was me. Yeah. And then yeah. maybe not all the time. But I definitely was gone from, you know, I was going to say oh. dusk to dawn, but that's not even remotely true. No, but you were you were out of the house and you yeah. were the smart one because if you stayed in the house, mom put you to work. Oh, yeah. Right. So one of the things I tried to do since I was miss allergic to everything right. is I would try to stay in my room and turn on music and have music and read a book. So maybe mom wouldn't think of me. You know, she'd just hear the music and I wouldn't be making any noise. I'd be super quiet. She wouldn't come get me to help her do work, and right? Do work? Sometimes. Nice. And so one of the things I can remember doing in the summer was going to the public library and checking out record albums. Oh my gosh, I had totally forgotten about that. Did you ever do that? Probably, but I i mean, I at least went with you. Oh, I remember one distinct album that I fell in love with. I must have been around 11 because this album came out in 81, which surprises me that the public library was so hip and cool that they had new releases. I mean, they were up on their vinyl. Apparently so. Yeah. Carrie, it was air supplies record album called the one that you love oh how dreamy it was so cool it had the hot air balloon on the front of the record album i listened to the heck out of that one so you know as i was thinking about air supply i was thinking gosh i know a lot of their songs mm -hmm. not just from that album right and it is it is cheese ball music basically every single song has the word love in it yeah Right, so let's see if you recognize any of these. Okay. Here I am. Oh, the, the one, one that you love. love. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm all out of love. I'm, I'm so, so lost without, without you. you. Yeah, got <laughs> That's it. That's so good. Let's see what else. Oh, this one I always was embarrassed to sing as a kid. Interesting. Making love out of nothing at all. Making love. <laughs> I was embarrassed to sing that for oh, my parents, right? Because, right. ew. Wah. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah, I know. So as I was listening and listening to these songs to see like how many I knew, um, I made you guys an Air Supply Spotify playlist. <laughs> <laughs> 
I am probably more excited about this one than any of the previous ones. <laughs> really? Oh, Air Supply. Oh, so fun. I found 12 of their songs that I really, really knew. I was surprised. I listened to a bunch I did not know. Of course, they had love in the title. <laughs> but it's on Spotify, guys. It's called MWS, Mom's Wooden Spoon Air Supply Playlist. Oh, I'm going to try it. I'm so excited. Yay. We'll put the link in our website if you want to go to that. And I think you could probably search for it on Spotify. Just type in MWS Air Supply and you will come to our Spotify playlist. That's hilarious. Do you know, I realized yeah. in my late 20s, I was a huge Eagles fan. Oh, I had no idea. And so my mother-in-law, gosh, they are huge yeah. Eagles fans, and got uh, my husband and I tickets. We went to see the Eagles. I knew every stinking song they played. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh. I like this. How did I not know? That's so funny. I think that is how we as kids and young adults realized the type of music that we liked. Because that's how I realized, I think I told you guys this, how I realized I like Billy Joel. I heard one of his songs from An Innocent Man. Yeah. And then I started to listen to the radio go, oh, that's a Billy Joel song? Oh, Billy Joel sang that? And I was like, hey, I think I like him. The power of radio back in the day, like oh, when we were yeah. kids, you hear stories about bands that couldn't decide which record to put. And there's specifically, I just heard this, some band, which I do not know the name of, could not decide with their production team yeah. which song to make A side and B side. Mm -hmm. They were fighting against each other. So they decided to not label the album and ship it off to radio stations. Oh, wow. And let the radio stations decide. Yeah. And whatever song the band was going for is the song that the radio stations liked the most. Oh, my gosh. And it's the one that went out on the airways. It's crazy popular if I knew what it was. You would know. Right. You totally recognize it. But yeah, I mean, just the power of radio the stations. The power of DJs at that time. Oh, yeah. Was amazing. Yes. And there were so many famous DJs. Oh, yeah. Rick Dees. And then, of course, we would listen to the Casey Kasem's yes. Top 100. Disco Duck. Uh, yeah. 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 So cool. It was pretty awesome. So yeah. my summer... Memories are all outdoors, of course, because nobody wanted me in their house. <laughs> no, no. Now, one of the things I did do with you was in Ohio, there's cracks in the road all the time because of the weathering, the sure. cold winters, hot summers, right? And so they would put tar yep. in the cracks in the road. And in our cul-de-sac, we would take sticks yep. and go dig out the tar. Yep. And nobody ever yelled at us. I'm really surprised. No. And then we'd get home. And we would have tar stuck to our hands. On our shoes. Everywhere. Yeah. And my dad would be like, all right, girls, come on. And he'd pour gasoline on us. Yes, or turpentine. Yes. Which reminds me, do you know a song we sang as kids that, have terp that has turpentine in it? Yes. It goes like this. Lincoln, Lincoln, I've been thinking, what in the heck have you been drinking? Looks like water, tastes like wine. Oh my gosh, it's turpentine. <laughs> Yeah. Now, where did that come from? I don't know. I don't either. That's a good one. That is. That's a good one. I sang a song to my husband the other yep. day from my elementary school. Oh. We had a kid in our class named Sam Malay. Yes. Sam, I do not know where you are now. He did not make <laughs> it through all four years of elementary school. He dropped out in elementary yeah. school. Yeah. Uh, oh, poor kid. Yeah, third grade dropout. <laughs> um, I don't know where he went, but we had a song that the name of the song was Sam Malay as a show off. What? He flung high a stone to hit a mango. Mango fell down, hit Sam right at the right in the head. Sam Malay is home in bed. Oh, Sam Malay is a show off. Anyway, what? I sang the song. I was like, there's another verse. I won't sing it for you. And he was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Appreciate my childhood music class what? memories with Mrs. Pruka. Mrs. Pruka, the music ball goes round and round. It stops at every little. Did you time. play music ball? I don't know if that's a real thing Is or that if that was a Miss Pruka thing. We called her Miss Puka. Everybody called her Miss Puka. How do you just pass up a name like Miss Miss Puka? Puka, that's amazing. You know that's so funny because my husband will sing along with me when I. Gosh, guys, I'm so sorry. We're going to sing you another song. At least I am. I, I don't know why you keep saying we. <laughs>
Wait a minute, you sing Sam Malay just a little. Yeah. Okay, so my husband will sing along at the top of his lungs with me to this one. Sweetly sings the donkey at the break of day. If you do not feed him, this is what I'll say. Yee-aw. 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 No Yee-aw. one Yee-aw. is going to listen to this episode. <laughs> what in the heck is wrong with you, sisters? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to edit the heck out of this one. Or just put a disclaimer. If you hate children's songs and clapping rhymes, do not listen. I mean, you're going to get halfway through and be like, do they do anything? What are they cooking? (laughs) All right. On that note, we're going to let that stuff cook for about an hour. And when we come back, do you think we could make a promise to just shut up and not sing? I feel like that is within my capability, Kristen. Um, Okay, guys, I'll promise. She's so lying. (laughs) We'll see you soon. An hour has passed, and the Ohio hot chicken sandwich filling is ready. It looks delicious. It really does, and it Mm kind of smells like stuffing. It does. It's weird because there is no stuffing, none of the flavors from the stuffing. This is a pretty bland dish. So that's why I put out two gorgeous Tupperware salt and pepper shakers for us to use if we need it. They are so cute. They I remember awesome. having some of these. Yeah, we totally did. Mm-hmm. And they're great because you can flip the little uh, rubber cap, mm-hmm. you know, over the holes so they don't spill. Yeah. Yeah. I you can take them camping. Oh, you could take them camping. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, I bought these this summer in Defiance from a woman named Missy, okay. and they were her grandma's. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, so I was so thanks, excited Missy. to get those. Yeah, thanks, Missy, for selling those to me. We are excited to use those just in case the chicken sandwich needs a little oof. I don't know. I mean, bland food is delicious. It is. Although, you know, I was watching that TikTok. Floyd Fry says that some people eat them with pickles on the sandwich. I can see that. I think that would probably taste pretty good. A little salty. Yeah. And then some people eat them with a slice of cheese. I can see that also being delicious. Yes. The one that I'm not sure would be delicious to me is a little squirt of mustard. That would obviously be heinously disgusting <laughs> to me. Oh, yeah. Well, it's gorgeous looking. I'm excited to take it a bite. Is. Now, you know, it's funny as I'm looking at it, the chunks of chicken are way bigger than I remember yes. the chunks of chicken being. And so I don't know if it's because whomever made them tore the chicken up into much smaller pieces right. or used canned chicken. That's possible. Or, you know, the, the chicken was, I suppose if you cook it in an Instapot, it would be even more tender and kind of break apart. If we took your husband's technique and beat the chicken with a beater. Yes. It would just break it apart into like just little strings, which is what I remember it being. Me too. Chunks. Me too. And you know what? I was really surprised. It's actually quite thick. The way I remember it was a lot of liquid. I do too. But I wonder if maybe after it sits for a while, because of course we always eat it after it had been out in what I remember is those huge aluminum tins. That's true. You know, for a while. Maybe, or maybe we just shouldn't have added as many saltines. I thought the recipe said an entire sleeve of soda crackers. Yeah. Oh, it says one cup of fine soda crackers, about one sleeve. <laughs> no, it says about one oh, okay. sleeve. I think we put it more than a I cup. I think we two cups. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, that's all right. It looks yummy. It'll be very saltini. I do not think we'll be adding any salt from Mrs. Grandma Shaker. I think we'll have to see. (laughs) And of course, we have some special treats from Defiance. I am so excited. So for years, I have told my husband that the very best potato chips and chip dip are purchased in Defiance. That's right. And for years, he thought I was out of my mind. Mm -hmm. Who would know? Who would tell a difference? Right. And then I took him and I bought potato chips and dip and forced him to try it. And he looked aghast. And I was like, would you not like it? And he's like, they really are the best. They really are. Now, Mm -hmm. we love Balric potato chips. We need to start that again. The best (laughs) potato (laughs) chips in the world are Balric potato potato chips. chips. Now, there are some different ways of pronouncing this. And uh, if you hold on to the very end of our podcast, 
you might hear my little description, my very annoying description about the pronunciation of the Balric potato chip. Really helpful. You, oh, you yeah. don't want to miss so it. So you want to hang on to the bitter end there. But regardless of how you pronounce it, they're delicious. They are. And they're yeah. not called wavy chips. They're called Marcelled. Because that's fancy, just like us. It is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually named after the women's hairstyle. Back then when they were created, women would Marcel their hair in this special type of wave. Interesting. I know, right? And these are made in Tiffin, Ohio, which is not too far from our hometown, Defiance. And then the dip we brought back that I brought back in a cooler oh from gosh. Defiance is from Arps Dairy. The best French onion dip ever. Yeah, known to man. It's really. thick. It is. It's delicious. It's Ooh, perfection. Yeah. It, it is, is chip dip perfection. And the Balric's Marcelling just picks Ooh. up the perfect amount. It does. To make for I the best bite. Of also, I oh, yeah. really do not know if I am more excited about eating the chicken sandwich yeah. or the chips and dip. Me too. All right. Do you want to go first? Yes. On the chicken sandwich? No, it's hot. So don't, don't care. Your mouth. Okay. I don't care. I wish, like you said, I wish that I'd remembered to buy bunny bread buns. I got Kroger brand white soft buns. So they're, they should be reminiscent of bunny bread. What do you think, Carrie? Is it as delicious as you remember? Yeah. Did we make it too thick? Is it too thick? We put in too many saltines. Dang it. But it is, I mean, it's taken a bite of your childhood. Ooh, I can't wait to try it. All with, right. With some extra saltines. That's right. And if you need this to be gluten-free, you really could crush up Balric potato chips and put it in there because there are some recipes that have chips in them. Oh, yeah. And that would be equally delicious. And uh, that would support Balric's and we want them to keep making their mm. delicious Marcelled chips. That's I wouldn't right. put the ARPS French onion dip in it, though. Probably not. Mm -mm. You are totally right. We probably added too many mm -hmm. crackers, but it tastes like childhood. It really does. You can taste the saltines, and I don't remember really tasting mm -mm. the saltines. So I think that's because we added too many. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter that you've got these mushy saltines. It's part of the texture. It's part of the expectation. It's really good. It is so yummy. The only thing we don't have is that delicious chicken broth soaking into the bun. I kind of miss that. Yeah. And well, that's a hundred percent our bad. It's we're... so funny. I wonder if they had smaller saltine sleeves because she, I didn't even measure it because in Mary's memo, it said about one sleeve. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, one sleeve. But if it, you, it was a, way more than a cup. Way yeah. more than a yeah. cup. Yeah. yeah. But I end result, even if you go curry curry with the saltines, it's still delicious. Yeah. It just changes the texture a little bit, and it definitely adds a little more of the... Saltine flavor. Which, saltine flavor, which is what? Kind of salty and malty? What? Yeah, it really is on the verge of tasting like stuffing to me. It's delicious. Oh, it really so is. So no, no fears if you go too crazy with the saltine. No, it's not one bit. Yummy. So if you want to surprise your family, whether you are from Ohio oh, or yeah. not... You need to make them some of this. is so good. It is so good. And it is so budget friendly. It's like making a meatloaf. You are stretching that meat by adding this starch to it. Yes. But it is just a heavenly mixture. It really makes the consistency of it soft and delicate and melt in your mouth. It is. I want to have a football party and I want to have people to come over and watch football and eat these sandwiches. Oh, me too. Oh my gosh. My daughter's in the high school band. Yes. So we go to high school football games all yep. the time. I wonder if I could sneak some sandwiches in. Ooh, you should. Eat my little sandwich. Because to me, it is... Very hand in hand with football oh, and yeah. then large gatherings of people, yep. graduations, potlucks, strawberry festivals, strawberry festivals. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I am so happy that we made this, this recipe. Yeah. This is the best first recipe choice of oh, yeah. all time. Of all time. I, I'm just going to smile all day. It just tastes like home. And if it does not taste like your home, it right. should. Yeah. So start eating it all the time now. Right. So then in a couple months, you'll be like, hey, let's go get some hot chicken <laughs> sandwiches. Oh happiness my goodness. Abounds. These sandwiches are happiness on a plate. They are. All right. That's it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining us yet again. Yay. 
Don't forget to check out our blog on our website and be sure to set your alarm for our next episode, which is going to be released on October 9th. It is going to be a rootin' tootin' good time as we crank up the old micro. Oh, yay. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening to Mom's Wooden Spoon. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe. If you want a copy of this recipe or to check out our blog, click on the link to our website in the podcast description. If you'd rather, you could get to our website through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pick your poison. Don't say poison. We're making food. And they actually pronounce it ball right. But when they say it really quickly, it sounds like ball right. Say ball right really fast. Oh, ball right. Ball right. Ball right. Yeah, Boric. Thanks for a great <laughs> listening experience. <laughs> okay, shut up. <laughs> Boric. Boric. Boric.